Space is often associated with these grand explorations, you know, landing people on the moon, sending rovers to Mars, like looking at the furthest reaches of the universe. But throughout history, there's been a number of more unusual space experiments, and some of them are a lot more close to home. One such experiment is the Sminyaya project, an ambitious experiment by the Russian space program to turn night into day. Imagine a massive mirror in space, orbiting Earth, capable of capturing and reflecting sunlight onto the surface, illuminating cities, remote areas, or wherever it may be needed. This Minyai project, meaning banner in Russian, was initiated in the early 1990s by the Russian space program. It was part of a wider plan to develop space-based solar mirrors that could reflect sunlight back to Earth. The primary goal of the project was to extend daylight hours in remote places like up in Siberia and other parts of the northern part of Russia. The Sninaya 2 mission launched in 1993 and it was the first real test of this concept. Why was it called 2 if it was the first? Honestly, I have no idea. I haven't been able to find any references to Sninaya 1, so I actually don't know. I guess it must just have been a land-based mission or something. I'm not really sure. Well, Sminye 2 was the first real deployment. It was a large space mirror created with a thin reflective film about 20 meter in diameter. It was designed to catch sunlight, bounce it off this reflective film surface, and then back down to Earth, creating a beam of light a few kilometers across. The idea then was that you could point this and it would track a point, let's say, in, in northern Siberia, where it's often very dark, or maybe you could use it if you were doing search and rescue during the night, stuff like that. The mirror itself was attached to a spacecraft and unfolded a bit like an umbrella in space. Sminye 2 did briefly reflect sunlight over Europe. It never really tracked a specific area. And the experiment was kind of short-lived because ultimately it was quite underwhelming. The light beam was not as strong as first anticipated and the light was closer to a full moon than the actual sun. Following Sminye 2, a second attempt was made, and since we know how logically they do name these projects, it was named Sminye 2.5. This was a larger mirror, 25 meters across, and also more refined with a better reflective surface to hopefully increase the brightness of the sunbeam. But this deployment was even less successful than the first one, as the entire mirror tore apart during deployment. In addition to providing light, it could also have significant energy saving benefits. By providing artificial light, it meant that people wouldn't have to turn on street lights as often. This could help reduce energy consumption and potentially could also help combat like seasonal depressions as people from the north will be all too familiar with. So although the concept I think is quite visionary and, and kind of interesting, which is obviously why I'm making this video, for starters, the whole structure was incredibly delicate. Um, it seems like just a, a small tear in it will cause the entire film to just rip apart, rendering the, the spacecraft basically useless. So a micrometeor strike would potentially be fatal to, uh, to the mirror surface. But beyond the just technical issues, there were also other concerns and many people worried about the potential environmental effects of artificially extending the day. People weren't really sure how this would affect the ecosystem for animals and plants that relied on the natural light cycle, or even if it would have an effect on humans. Ultimately, the cost of continuing the project outweighed the perceived benefits. And as you may know, in the late 90s, the Russian economy wasn't really the strongest. So after the failed launch of Sminye 2.5, the project was scratch. So what do you think? Do you think this is a cool concept? Do you think it's something we should try and take up again here 30 years later? Or do you think it's a dead project and it probably should stay like that? Comment section below. But the construction of the actual Buran space shuttle, the one that went to space, started in 1986. The five would bank over a lot earlier in its flight path, and maybe you're beginning to see where the problem arises here. 